Now we continue with how to handle negative people. So, just now I said that if we have a problematic husband or wife or family member, he might take away the money or do something bad to the family. At the same time, I want to discern this person and learn not to be affected by him emotionally. And the second thing I want to think about is how to protect the family and protect myself too. Now if the family member continue to gamble, take away, take away, take away all the money from the family, it's very hard to be, you know, together in the family. So we have to find ways how to resolve this problem. It depends on the problem. Now, but the way you handle is sometimes not direct confrontation. This is a big, big issue. For each problem, is there needs to be different ways to handle it. You, you might need the advice of some a pastor or some wise Christians to find a way. So we, for instance, you know, I, I would say this, you know, when we talk about this. If the husband or wife is committing adultery, According to the Bible, we can have a divorce when there is adultery. And how about gambling? The Bible doesn't mention gambling or heavy beating. If someone in your family is beating you every day, sooner or later you can get seriously that are hurt, injured. In those situations, like gambling, if he steals all the money from the home, sooner or later there is no money. So in that situation, I would suggest counseling. And if the person doesn't, you know, repent at all, I would say it's impossible to live together. Maybe, maybe there you know, can be a peer of not living together and try to find a solution. Now, if, for instance, co-working situation in the church, if a person is always hurting other people, at the same time, you don't want to be hurt by the person. I don't want to be angry or unhappy. But I want to find a way that we can talk together how to work together well. So for each situation, we need to find ways to resolve problems. But when we resolve problems, we don't have to use anger. We can use the method of exploration. When we have this problem, how can we solve it? How can we handle this problem? Okay? Now, let me tell you, to understand not to eat garbage, is it very hard to understand? Is it? Can you understand it now? Can you understand it? But let me tell you, it is very hard to do it. Why? Because we say it's unfair. And we have anger. So those are the feelings we need to handle. 
I've been hurt by people for years. And I learned to turn off those negative words. And that's why I can keep on being joyful. So that's something we have to do intentionally. You discern the problem, you have to do it intentionally. And okay, now let me ask you now, do you have any question? Because I've told you how to do it, but some of you might say my situation is too difficult. Yes. You can come forward and hold the mic to ask the question. Pastor, come and ask. Thank you so much for this message. I'm sorry I came in late, but That's okay. I can grasp quickly what you are trying to say. Um, dealing with negative people. Is there a time when you really have to part? Have to part. Have to part. Have to part. Yes. When it's oh, yeah. too much. Is there a time when, when you really have to say this? Yeah. Enough is enough. I've tried all this and this and that. Okay. No, yeah, I know. To, because yeah. I believe everyone has a choice to keep going yeah. and doing the way they want. Right. You try to cancel, you try to help someone. Okay. You have even tried to bring in other people to see that that person gets helped. Yeah. And then you think, okay, let me again be, uh, I believe there is a time when these people that keep on bringing negative situations in our lives will become a burden and then they will begin to control us. Soon or later, they are going to get into other people and destroy the entire situation. What do we do when we've tried all these things okay. and there is no change? Okay. I was at you was you so can be sitting front in case you need to ask another one. We'll hey. back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 When this person really causes a lot of problem and refuses to change, there's a time to part. But I want to say this. In the process of handling the problem, it's very important that we keep our cool, that we stay calm and peaceful. And explore ways to resolve the problems. Instead of saying, why did you do that? You know that hurts the church. And what happened is he will attack you because he said he, you have a lot of anger when you talk with me. But instead we can say this. Uh, now, we have to handle this very carefully according to Matthew 18. It's best that the person he hurts will speak up, you know, and handle it with him. But, but sometimes in the church, some people say, I'm not willing, I'm afraid. And if we have to handle it as a pastor, now in that situation, it's best to bring in that person. And in the process, it's best to ask questions. Like, I heard this happen. Can you tell me exactly what happened? Do you remember what he said and what you said? 
What do you think what you said could affect him? Now all these questions do not carry an accusation. Very important. Now if we say like this, do you know you have heard him? There is already an accusation. No matter how soft we speak. Do you know you have heard him? It will cause him to be angry. So we want to handle it very calmly. And at the same time discerning his mental condition. His emotional condition. Is he making sense? Is he angry or out of control? Sometimes we might have to stop yeah. and say, let's ask someone else to come together to talk about this. Yeah. Now this is endless skill. It's conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. If this is not handled right, I've seen two pastors who have seen a problematic person in the church. But these two pastors handled it in a very angry way. What happened is the two churches split. Because the other person can accuse the pastor is very biased and he is angry. And many people may listen to him. So, so in all these situations, very important that we that we learn not to be affected by garbage, negative emotions and words from people. Okay, so if we part, if we don't handle it carefully, he can take half of the church away. So be very careful. Okay. Any more questions about this? And maybe some of you are affected by some people and you find it so hard to have joy and freedom. Okay. Any any other question? Okay. Now if you cannot think of it, it's okay. Okay. You know we came to learn, so I need to learn a lot. Yes. Um, I, would, it, I didn't think it was, what is the, like, yes, we've gone through, uh, we've been empathetic while we are trying to treat a brother or a sister who has had multiple situations and uh, it's causing a lot of problems. Yes, we've gone through all these, uh, what did, what did you call them? Explore all the avenues of trying to solve this problem. But then it's still there. We've tried to keep our calm. We've tried to be as sober as possible. Of course, filled with the Holy Spirit, we pray. But still, uh, the brother or sister is not actually responding uh, to anything. Okay. Um, we've done all that. I'm not saying that we should say you go or what, but I just wanted that it to be clear that when we part, it is biblical also. Yeah, I it's just biblical. wanted it to, it's biblical. To, yes, I just it's wanted biblical. it to be clear that when yeah. we part, is it biblical or it will not be biblical to part? Yeah, and are there instances in the Bible where actually ministers had to part so that we can we can feel joy even as we are doing even as that happens, of course we can feel bad that we've lost a member, but, uh, you know, that we can feel joy that we've tried all our best and it is now his choice, not, not our problem. Okay. 
Now, um, the biblical support, First Corinthians, that there is, Paul said in a Corinthian church, there's a man who has his stepmother, who lived, lived with the stepmother, as, you know, like a wife. And then Paul said then, you have to get him out of the church. But then in 2 Corinthians, Paul said, Now if this person repent, give him a chance. So if he, you know, doesn't repent, for instance, someone comes in the church to chase other girls or, or guys. When, it, when we know it's true, we cannot let that happen there. And so we have to handle that. And if the person doesn't obey, he has to leave the church. And I, I want to say this. When we handle, you know, problem with someone and the person attacks you and you try to point out his mistakes, it's better that we don't handle it. Because when we handle it, we it might say something like this. You have done something wrong. And it's not me who is wrong. When we do that, then we are defending. When it comes to someone attacking us and say, you're not handling right, you're not doing well, it's best to have the leaders handle it. And we should also have the humility to admit that, yes, in some points I have you know, not done well. I'm sorry for that. So I want to say that it, when we handle something like that, uh, now something like that has happened in my ministry, and I took my wife along to talk with this person. Because if I just talk alone with that person, the person might think that I am biased against her. So I let my wife handle it. Now, if necessary, I'll get some more people. Okay. okay. So any more questions? Especially how you have been hurt or how it makes you feel unhappy, no strength, no joy. Now I have experiences like this. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Pastor has a question. Uh, last year, uh, I broke a member in church, whereby she came, she, she was standing up and she was a minister. We are feeling in charge. Now, this member had a lot of people behind her. Uh, but people behind her, she was a Catholic. Now, I told them when you are entered, when you are starting to minister in the pulpit, it's better to take off the rosary out, the cross. Yeah, no, I know the rosary. Yeah, out. out. It's very, very bad when you are standing in the pulpit and you are ministering people and people see that rosary. And they will ask, is this born again church or what? I told them, I counseled them. Ah, time came, the children went and sat down. The children went and sat down. Yeah, the children went and sat down and said, the pastor, today we are not going to come back in church. Because they have told us, to, to, to remove the rosary, we are not going to come back. And they went. Now, I was, uh, nothing hurted me so much. Up to now, 
I, should I go and tell them I'm sorry to, to, to tell you that such a thing or not? Talk about your resident. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, okay. Now there are people who come in church, for example, you see the way you, they are. Then you say, should I tell this person or not? If I tell this person, will you run or not? We have that fear in us. Okay. Someone comes and says, should I speak or I leave? Okay. Now there's a problem that I have. I can okay. say something. Should I speak this one? Will you not run out of the church? If I will speak, will you not run? run? No, for that instant, you leave. Okay. <laughs> Let me ask you this. When you try to talk to her, <laughs> did you try to listen to her and also um, ex you know, discuss the difference between the Catholic Church and the uh, uh, Protestant uh, Church? Uh, yeah. I okay. 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 I told her all that. Okay. Uh, the children that she had, for her, she had no Rosalie. What do you mean her children? You mean her, her sons and daughters? Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, the sons and daughters. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Now I consult the sons and daughters. Uh huh. I told them give me the the, 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 the cross and they gave me. <laughs> okay. Now, when they had their mother heard that the pastor removed the the, the rosary from from, from them, <laughs> they said don't go back to church. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Now, <laughs> okay. Now this question is. When something we confront with someone and it causes a person to leave, how should we handle ourselves and handle the situation? Uh, I have an experience like this, let me tell you. When I was away from Hong Kong in one church, the church wanted me to start a Chinese ministry. When I started the Chinese ministry, the head, because uh, what happened was they, they have a summer uh, day camp for the children, summer Bible school for the children. And I started a Chinese class so that I can have you know, ways to reach out to the Chinese to start a Chinese ministry. And then the leader of this summer Bible school doesn't like a Chinese class. And she talked to the pastor and she said she will leave the church. Now she is a very, you know, devoted Christian. She has been teaching children for a long time and she was a leader. Finally she left. And the pastor said to me, he said, many people have left this church in different locations for different reasons. You know, in that church, they, one time they built a partition at the back with glass that they can see into the church and so that people have babies can stay in the back. Because some people have babies, they request that, that we have this partition so that babies will not disturb the people. But when they build this, some people left the church. <laughs> so, you know, they have to go up to take the Holy Communion. They have to walk up a few steps. And some people suggest to have a handrail so that the elderly can go up holding to the handrail. 
Abamu ni waga mabu bazi mbeo akantu ketwe kwa tako fa waka de solo kwe kwa tanga wetu nya kwa dalo genda wali But when they built that some people left the church <laughs> But some people whenever you don't do something according to the wish they will dislike the church and leave the church So I would say don't feel bad if someone leave the church for a reason that you think is biblical But I also want to say this. In order to keep people faithful to your church, it's important that your church has a clear direction and vision. Now I told, I told my members my my purpose, my vision of my ministry. Okay, now this is how I describe my ministry. I described this to my members, to my people. I said, we follow the teachings of the Bible, we love the Lord. We want a close relationship with the Lord. We want to teach, follow the teachings in the Bible. And we also pursue being filled with the Holy Spirit. And I want to train the members so that they can serve God. Even in other ways, for instance, praying for people or visiting people or, or you know, just say hi to people. So that one day when we see Jesus, Jesus will say, you are a good and faithful servant. And we want to do mission work to different countries, to bless different countries. And we want to revive the spiritual life of this church and different churches. And then I want to raise you up to serve God. So that one day you you know God will say that you're a good and faithful servant. So I told people about our vision and you know the characteristic of the teachings. And then some people they like the teaching and the purpose, the vision of the church. They are very faithful to follow, to be trained and to serve. So this is how we keep some people very faithful. Now, some people, they just want to be blessed. When they come to the church, we continue to bless them too. And we are patient to bless them. But what I mean is when I have a clear direction and vision, people know what it means when they come to this church. And when they agree with the church, they will be faithful to the church. And when they participate, they will stay in the church. And also I keep telling them, one day you can go higher and higher ministry. Like, I try to raise up more people to preach when I'm away. Yeah. We already have a group counseling and praying for people. And these people are very steady. Okay. Now, if someone disagree with the teaching like this woman, Now, if she doesn't leave for this issue, she might leave for another issue. So, now, I hope you all will be We all have a clear vision and direction of the church. So that people know what, you know, how they can, uh, you know, how they can follow God's plan in the church. And they will keep some people faithful. 
Okay. Yes. Amen. We need to appreciate the pastor. Thank you so much. Um, just uh, because here we are not just pastors, but we are a mixture of departmental heads and pastors and you know guys responsible for different things in the church. But you find that how, how do we develop uh, guys and how do we like you have a leader in a church that you delegated to do some work, but then they can't handle even uh, a mosquito issue. Uh, something tiny because they fear people will hate them you know so there is a problem say there, there wasn't easy distribution of uh, of Bibles so some people didn't receive others did. so the, the leader fears to address that issue with a person who was in charge thinking oh you know okay talking about those people who are there to, to please people how do we uh, how do we get out of that and try to fulfill God's purpose in our churches, uh, but addressing issues that are affecting the the church? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ah, it was a child who was so bad. One more man to avoid the police. I'm going to buy no one is going to be able to bear. Now, if I buy a new, I'm going to use a bad alarm. But I'm going to buy a new. I'm going to use a bad alarm. But I'm going to use a bad no, 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 when we do everything according to God's teaching, and I'm diligent to take up my responsibilities, when it comes to the result, then we say, Lord, I'm not responsible for the result. Because the reason some people are, hard, are afraid to handle the problem, because they are afraid of the result. So if we have this teaching for the whole church and not for the leaders, that we believe that God is the head of the church, this ministry belongs to God, and God will make it grow if we trust in Him and love Him and obey Him and serve Him. So when we do everything we need to do, we still need to evaluate. For instance, have we been doing well? Are there some, something we need to improve? And if we have really done our best, then we can say, okay, I just relax. The reason why ministers and leaders can relax is because it's God's ministry. I've done, I've done my best and God is very happy with my ministry in my life. Then I can be relaxed. So we tell the leaders too. Don't think of the results. But we want to be very careful. When it comes to handling people's problems. Now this is very important. The skill to handle people is very, very important skill. Amen. Which I can talk about later when we have something to discuss how can we talk in a way not to offend mm -hmm. basically when we talk we always realize what words we criticize what words will make people feel unhappy Instead of, you know, criticizing and attacking them, we want to explore and find out what is the best. And at the same time, you tell them, you're very precious, yes. you're very important. And how we decide to run the church is something very important. 
And when we follow the right way, God is very happy with us. So let us think about this issue. How can we handle it well? So when people have this heart of following God only, and at the same time be gentle with people, that way, then they learn the wisdom, the wisdom of handling problems and people. Okay, okay. Did I answer your question? Yes, so it's the, the wisdom, you know, that build them up so they have faith, not to be afraid some people might leave, you know. But when they, I told some people, when you handle problematic situation, please, Tell me first. Uh -huh. Tell me first. Don't handle it yourself. Don't handle it yourself. Agambe, go to the Kanisa. Gatona wa kuata kumsonga enene mwoti kuonjora. Soko ntegezi. Go msumba. Aliye ku. Wale me kusoka kutomera. Owa weko one. Wale okonju kirete la tewa liwa dewa kwezeji. I use an illustration. There is a woman in our group. Every time she comes, whenever there is something she doesn't want people to do, don't do this. Don't do that. She would keep doing it to different people. And I told her, Please, when you see any problem with anyone, please tell me, let me handle it. When you handle it, you could hurt someone. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that's something. Now, I, I, I should have said, I should have said. What do you think? What you said would affect people. But this person seemed not to be aware. You know, I keep telling her she still to understand this. So we have to be careful of such people that they handle it very carelessly. Pastor, the reason why people are laughing is because, as you're giving those examples, the reason why people are laughing is because. The, we are realizing that characters are the same world over. Yeah. The same issues that affect the churches in China, yeah. especially with character, are the right. same that are happening in Kampala. Right, yes. So that's yes. why when you, told, when you talked to the lady who used to shh, 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 <laughs> they remembered something and they had to laugh. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you. So that happens everywhere. now. <laughs> I have also another issue in church, Pastor. Uh, I have uh, a woman in church. Uh, her, her, wife, her husband. Her husband is a Muslim. Now, she, whenever she, she could come to church, she used to hide. Then she comes here. Yeah. She hides. So she, the, she yeah. hides to come. She so just snakes into the church. Uh -huh. so then the she comes she in charge. So that the husband does not know the issue. Okay. Now time came, the husband realized. The husband came and called me and told me these words. Pastor, you're my friend. But if I get this woman in your church again, you're going to take her. <laughs> what does it mean to take her? You will marry her now. You will get married. You will marry her. The Muslim has said, I will not marry her anymore. Yamuga Bula. Yamuga Bula. I, I give her as a seed. <laughs> the Muslim woman will be doing it. She will do an attack or attack the church or attack no, the church. No, no, no. He just said, in fact, because she had a room, he had a rumor. That you are wife, the wife, she prays my church. Now him took a step to come to me and told me, Pastor, I have no problem with you. But again, if I find my woman in your church, or I hear my woman is in your church praying, you are going to take her. Take her. Yeah. Take, what do you mean take her? Take her. As in, that's a saying here yeah. to mean you will marry her. Instead of oh, me, okay. uh, she will not be my wife anymore. Okay. She will okay. become your wife. Okay. Uh, yeah. She will be my wife. Now, the woman loves so much God. And he told me, now I'm afraid. Up to now, 
I don't go back. I don't call her. I have left her. <laughs> <laughs> because although now the pastor I, says, uh, since the, the words of the husband, he is afraid to go back to uh, to, to call that woman or to speak <laughs> to my her because of the husband. Then you are afraid. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reality, what I've done in front of God's presence, is it right? What wisdom or knowledge can you give me in such a situation? Now, does the woman come to the church for help? Okay. So the woman is also at home because she also had the words of the husband. So she's also afraid to go back to church because she realized the husband discovered she's been sneaking out to go to church. Okay. Now this this issue, you know, is I think it's best that I handle it with you privately yes. because of the publicity. Yes. 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 No, instead of speaking online, now, so I handle that with you privately. Yeah. It's not an easy issue to handle. Okay. Okay. Any other question? Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pastor Yip. Thank you. I have one question. You talked about solving problems if you have argument with a, with a person. In case you have argument with a person, I'm asking that. I'd say it again. Argument. In case you have an argument okay. with someone, yeah. I'm asking that. Is there an incident? Is there an incident where or by? If a person annoys you or if a person hurts you, is it, is it possible that you, you, if you talk to that person and try to solve that, uh, and you try to solve a problem with him or her, and it fails, is there, is it allowed at times to rebuke at him or her? Okay. Is it correct? Is it to okay rebuke. to rebuke? Yes. Yeah. Now, I, the question is, you know. When we handle someone's problem, is it, you know, if we find a problem with the person, is it correct? It's okay for us to rebuke the person. What I want to say is this. Um, when we handle, if someone is against us, and we're trying to show that the person is wrong, and the person is against us. I would say that it's best that someone else rebuke the person. Now, if it's not related to us, the problem is not related to us. We can guide this person to see what he did, you know, what do you think, what you have done that would affect the other person. Now, I want to, I want to say this. Sometimes we think that that person has, you know, done something wrong, and we want to rebuild the person. Very often, it can produce an opposite effect. Because the person might say, I have my own reasons. So for me, I think it's best to ask him why and what do you think what you have done, you know, would affect the other person. <laughs> and we can ask the person, what is the better way? What is the better way to handle it? Please look at me. Everyone look at me, don't look at me. Okay, everyone look at me. Okay. okay, everyone look here. It's better that we lead the person to understand, you know, what he has done could affect people. And if that person doesn't accept that what he does, can affect your person. We can use other example to help him understand. And if this person is argumentative, 
we can get some more people to come together to discuss different situations how when someone talks a certain way can affect people so that person can learn that Oh, the way I talk can affect people. Now, this is the best way to handle. After he realizes what he has done is wrong, we can ask him, then how can we handle it? And, you know, we can say something like this. Do you think we should ask God for forgiveness? And should we handle it with this person? So that there is no negative feelings left behind. So what I'm saying is, it's best to lead the person to come to repentance. To rebuke someone when someone doesn't accept it. In certain situations it's necessary. But it's best to lead him now. He is here. You want him to come here. To lead him step by step to understand the sins involved. Instead of just saying you have sinned. Because the person may not accept it. And he just get more angry. Now, my way of doing it is not because I'm afraid of him. It's just the wisdom to change someone from point A to point Z. I cannot just change him instantly. But I want to say that, yes, there are times we need to rebuke. But there is heavy rebuking and gentle rebuking. You know, heavy rebuking is, you can lose your salvation. <laughs> what you have done has hurt someone very badly. Instead, <laughs> we can say, Have you seen something wrong with how you talk with him? Mm -hmm. Do you think we should repent? Mm -hmm. We all have seen like that. Mm -hmm. We should repent. So, so, so the gentle ways. Now, when it comes to someone who has done something very seriously, for instance, he has committed adultery. Now, some people might think, if he has committed adultery, Kneel down. <laughs> <laughs> now, he has done something very bad. Does it mean that? <laughs> Does it mean a heavy way will make him repent? <laughs> he still won't repent. Yes. But if we lead them step by step, I don't put it down for the Bible. Yeah. From point A to B to C to D. That way, he gradually can learn to repent. <laughs> That's why Nathan said to David, mm. Na, uh, the prophet Nathan, when he confronted David for sinning, he did not say, do you know that you have committed adultery and you deserve to be you know, to be executed. He used a story. Yeah. So that's the wisdom to lead someone to repentance. So the skill to change someone, we call it counseling. To lead him gradually, step by step. To see his problems and then repent. Okay. God bless you all.